let's talk about adding rational expressions with unlike denominators. Okay, so um, first of all, I would like you to review the video that I created called Finding the LCD of Rational Expressions. And I put a couple of stars here because that will that is really the key to what we're doing right now. So uh, you definitely want to make sure you review that and understand what's happening because I'm going to go over that part of these problems relatively quickly, okay? Um, all right, so now we're adding, as an example, adding these two rational expressions together. Now remember, all a rational expression is is sort of like a fancy fraction. And what I mean by that is that you simply have polynomials in the numerator and the denominator. But whenever you add two fractions or two rational expressions, you see how I'm adding them together right here? You always need a what? Common denominator, okay? So that's why we need to, to learn how to find a least common denominator. So what you do is you take 10x squared, so you take the first denom denominator, and you find its prime factorization. So that's going to be 2 times 5, and remember we leave the x squared as just x squared. And then we take the 25x, and we find the prime factorization of that. So that's going to be 5 times 5, and then times x. And to find the LCD, what we do, recall, is you look at these and you say, well, you compare the uh, smallest factor you see. So I'm thinking about 2's first, because 2 is less than 5. So it's 1, 2 versus no 2's. So you take 1, 2, and then you go on to the 5's. 1, 5 versus 2, 5's, and you take 2, 5's. And then I go on to the X's, <clears throat> and it's 2 X's versus 1 X, and you go for 2 X's. Now when you multiply all this together, that's your LCD. So it's 2 times 5, which is 10, <clears throat> times 5, which is 50. So my LCD is 50 x squared. Okay, now what we're going to do with the LCD, <clears throat> just like when you add fractions together, is you want to convert these expressions to expressions that have this denominator, okay? So it's going to be this. I'm going to write something over 50 x squared, okay? That's going to be the new denominator for this rational expression. And then the same thing for this. It's going to be plus something over 50 x squared. Okay, now, you have to convert this 10x squared into 50x squared. And I know that you're probably looking at this and saying, oh, easy, just take this whole thing and multiply it by 5 to get that. And that's true. Now, I want to show you another way to do it that's going to be useful when the problem gets more, more complicated, which is what we're going to do in a second. So here's what we're going to do. You see this 10x squared? That's the same as this, okay? Now this is the 10x squared right here in factored form. And what's that 10x squared doing? Well, according to this, the 10x squared is becoming 50x squared. That means this 10x squared is becoming this 50x squared. So we're going to think about how the prime factorization of 10x squared becomes the prime factorization of 50x squared. That is, we're comparing this, okay, with this. And when you compare those two, what's missing? Well, they both have a 2. 1, 5 versus 2, 5. So you see how a 5 is missing? And they both have an x squared. So if I multiply this by a 5, I get that. And that's why I'm going to put parentheses around this and say, hey, let's multiply it by a 5, OK? But whatever you multiply the denominator by, you have to multiply the top by as well. And that's why 5 times 3, well, that gives me, rather, 15. That's what the new numerator is. That's how you figure out what the new, new numerator is. You play that game. Let's try it with 25x. 25x is over here, right? So here's the 25x in factored form. That's going to become the LCD. And now compare these two. What's missing? Well, clearly a 2 is missing, right? Now, this already has two 5s, right? But what else is missing? An x. So this is missing a 2 and an x when compared with the LCD. And that's why I'm going to multiply this by 2 and x. That is 2x. So you multiply the numerator by the same thing. And what do we get? Well, 2x times 4 is 8x. And now you're in business because the denominators are the same. So you can add the numerators together. So we're going to write this as 8x plus 15 all over 
50x squared. Now sometimes you can go a little further and you can cancel. I can't cancel here though, and the reason is because you can only cancel when it's multiplication. So right now it's addition, and I can't factor that numerator, right? And that's because 8 and 15 don't have anything in common. So in this case, we're in, for this problem, we're finished. We can't reduce. So that's how we add two rational expressions together. We get a common denominator, and then we play this comparison game of the factorizations. Okay, let's try another one that's a little more challenging now that we know how things go. Okay, we're going to subtract. So we're taking this rational expression, which is basically a big fraction, take away another fraction. And of course, you have to make sure, right, that's the key point. Whenever you're adding or subtracting, you have to make sure that the denominators are the same. So we're going to look for a, an LCD, a common denominator. So once again, you find the, you, you take both denominators and you factor them. So x squared minus 5x plus 6 and 5x squared minus 15x. So let's see, it's going to be, well, when you factor this, it's going to be x minus 2 times x minus 3. And notice how you're done, at, you're done right here, right? Because these are prime polynomials. Okay, let's factor the next one. Well, these have in common a, well, they have a 5, right? A 5 and an x. So it's going to be 5x times, well, what's left? It's going to be x minus 3. So I'm, I've completely factored this polynomial as well. 5x times x minus 3. And now to find the LCD, what you do is you start with the numbers. So I'm looking at these and saying, okay, this has a 5, 1, 5. This has no 5s. So I put 1, 5 in. And then do you see how there's a factor of x right here? This has one factor of x and no factors of x. So I put in one factor of x. And then I go on to factors of x minus 2. One factor of x minus 2, no factors of x minus 2. So you put in one of those. And then you go on to x minus 3s. 1x minus 3 versus 1x minus 3, and you simply put in 1x minus 3. And now you can see why I said the process of finding the LCD is crucial to these problems. So it's okay if you have to go back and review that, but you want to make sure you understand that um, how to do this process. And there's a whole other video for you to watch if you'd like a little bit of review on that. Okay, now this is your LCD. Now remember what's going to happen. This fraction is going to become something, right? It's going to be something over 5x times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And the same thing, right? It's going to be minus, same thing for the next fraction. It's going to be something over 5x times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, now, remember how it goes, right? This denominator is going to become that. But I can't see that. There's no way I can see what I have to multiply, or I should say it's very hard to see what I have to multiply this by to get that. But the key, of course, is to work, to work in the factored forms. Remember, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is this. And if you look at its factored form, and it's okay for you to circle it like this, and compare it with what it's trying to become, with, which is that, when I compare those, do you see what's missing? Well, they both have x minus 2s. They both have x minus 3s. I clearly have to multiply this by a 5x to become that. And that's why I go back to the original up here and I say, oh, I've got to multiply this by a 5x. But whatever you multiply the denominator by, you have to multiply the numerator by as well. So I have to multiply the x by a 5x. And that's why I get 5x squared. OK, go on to the next one the 5x squared minus 15x, you take its factored form, right, which is over here, and you can circle it. And what's it going to become? Well, just like the other one, it's got to become the LCD. And now you do a little comparison, right? 5x, oh, you know, there's already a 5x. And an x minus 3, x minus 3, this is clearly missing a factor of x minus 2. And that's why you come back over here and say, oh, you need an x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply by an x minus 2. Do you see how I put parentheses around the whole denominator? That's because I'm multiplying the whole thing by x minus 2, not just the 15x. 
Likewise, whatever's in the numerator, multiply the whole thing by x minus 2. OK, and when you do that, what are you going to get for this numerator? Well, let's see, x times x is x squared, and then negative 2x. So this is going to become x squared minus 2x. OK, now these have the same denominator, right? That's the whole point. Then what you can do is you can take this numerator and subtract off that numerator. That's how it goes when you're subtracting fractions. It's the top numerator, or the, the numerator of the fraction on the left, take away the numerator of the fraction on the right. But do you see how this is, addition, this is subtraction right here? Whenever you're subtracting something that has addition or subtraction, that is whenever you're subtracting a sum or a difference, you always need parentheses because you want to subtract off the whole thing. So this is going to become 5x squared, take away the whole numerator, so parentheses, x squared minus 2x. Okay, and then over the common denominator, which is 5x times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the negative 1 right here. So it's going to become 5x squared minus x squared. Okay, negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2x all over 5x times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And we want to see, we want to simplify a little bit first of all, right? So 5x squared minus x squared, that's going to be, well, let's go ahead and do this, finish this problem up over here. So I'm, it's going to be 4x squared plus 2x over the LCD, which is 5x times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And now I can go a little further, right? I can factor that numerator. So I can write this as 2x times, well, it's going to be 2x plus 1, right? All over, that's a 1 there, all over 5x times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And the whole point of doing that is that sometimes you can reduce. And I can here because look, the x's are going to cancel. But you can only cancel when you have it as multiplication like I do now. Like for example, I wouldn't go over here and cancel the fives because this is not uh, multiplication. This is addition. You have to first get it in a factored form like this before you can cancel. So now we cancel the x's and we're left with, well, it's going to be in the numerator we're looking at, it's going to be 2 times 2x plus 1 divided by that denominator, which is 5 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And that would be my answer. Now, you don't have to multiply back out. You don't have to take the 2 and distribute it or multiply these. You can just leave your answer like this once you've done all the factoring. OK? All right, so that's how you, multi or how you uh, add and subtract uh, rational expressions. You have to find the LCD, and then you have to create yeah, once you have that common denominator, then you're going to add or subtract the numerators and then finally simplify at the end if you can. Okay, until next time.